Hello and welcome to Take This TV, the television book club podcast where each week we talk about an episode or two of our favorite shows and discuss it with our friends in the fandom. That is none other than you. Hello, our friends. It's so good to be here with you again. I'm Carmen Askerdies and I'm joined as always by the wonderful Kimberly Woods. Hello. <laughs> hey, hey, hot potatoes. This season we are talking about Mr. and Mrs. Smith. What episode are we watching today? Oh, we're watching the final episode, episode eight of the series, and it's called A Breakup. Oof. John and Jane are taking a time out. Will they be able to say they're sorry, or will this be the end of their adventure? <clears throat> Grab some tissues. John and Jane, it's a breakup. Only this time, it's life and death. Don't be so dramatic. I like that episode <laughs> description. That's really good. <laughs> Grab some tissues, John and Jane. They're calling us John and Jane. <laughs> oh, are we John and Jane? Have we been John and Jane this whole time? Grab some tissues, John and Jane. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> don't, don't come after don't us. Don't give that assignment high. to us. Yeah. <laughs> so. So the final episode. It's all led to this, Carmen. It has. Um, <laughs> I, I have thoughts, Kimberly. <laughs> I have thoughts. <laughs> Um, I'm but excited let's start, to get into it. Let's, let's start, start at the beginning here. At the beginning, yeah. At the start of this episode, our Jane gets a message from Hi Hi that says, Terminate. Take out your Smith. Yep. Yikes. Here we go. Yikes. <laughs> Double yikes. Yoinks. <laughs> <laughs> Zoinks. Jinkies. <laughs> Zoinks. <laughs> <laughs> all of the, all the things. Uh, we seem to be entering the uh, Mr. and Miss Smith territory of the Brangelina movie. The here Brangelina. With the <laughs> I've never heard that. That's good. R.I.P. So, to Brangelina. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It kicks off with that. She like immediately closes her laptop. Um, yeah, and then some shots start firing through her window. Yeah, so she like she wakes up and is going about her day casual, gets this message, it's like, oh my gosh, but then continues to go about her day because what are you supposed to do? And as she's um getting food for uh Max, she drops something and bends down to pick it up and realizes that she almost got sniped and takes cover. And then honestly, probably one of the most tragic moments happens. Max Max is shot. That sweet boy. The- the cat is not saved. We did what not did save they the do cat. to my boy? <laughs> 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 Jane's worst nightmare come to life. She always thought her cat would live forever. Uh, she wanted to believe, but uh, yeah, that was tragic. That yes. was tragic. And of course, in her mind, she immediately thinks, oh shoot, John's out to get me. So I will say that like, as I was watching this, Max dies, Jane's taking cover in the kitchen, and then we cut to John. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I was like, okay, that means these things are happening at the same time. So it's not John that's shooting at Jane. Yes. Um, And so John's walking with his mom, and then we find out he's been staying with her because he and Jane are, he, he said he was leaving in the last episode. And they get back to the house, and he notices that the seat of the toilet is up. And as we learned in a previous episode, John never leaves the seat up. Um, and so he tells his mom to, you know, go to the library or something and he notices that there's C4, um, by the door, which first of all, he catches the tripwire. It was was like, okay, good, John. That's a good catch. I would have been super dead because I like the (laughs) the seat being up or like, little. I would have never noticed that. (laughs) So like, it would have been a wrap. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I would have been a goner too. So that was a good catch by him. Um, it was. He immediately gets a text from Jane that's like, we need to talk. Or does he text her that? Um, but one of the I messages them. One of the messages them. I thought it was Jane for some reason. But um, they end up meeting at a museum because she's waiting there for him. Right. And then so like, mm-hmm. so we see Jane getting shot at. And the last time we see her, she's taking cover. And then we see John discover the C4. And then we mm-hmm. see them meet up at the museum. And I was like, wait. So was John shooting at Jane? Uh, and then I was like, did Jane put the C4 in John's house? So I don't know, like, or his mom's house. Or yeah. Whatever. And to me, I was like, because they showed 
John immediately after, and he was just casually walking with his mom and seemed to have spent the morning with her, I was like, okay, there's other agents involved here. Yeah. But they don't know that. <laughs> They're not thinking that. <laughs> Uh-oh, big problem. <laughs> <laughs> They're not communicating. Um, but yeah, they meet up at the museum. Um, she's staring at a painting. I think he comments, like, something about the, the, the painting being the loneliest girl in the world or something. Oh, Which so like comes again, back again. <laughs> my art history professor would be disappointed. I'm sorry, because <laughs> I, I feel like this is important. In the painting, there is a woman and she's looking at an open doorway, and the idea is like, is she alone or is there someone else there? Is she just lonely? Uh, so that's what John says. Like, is she alone or is she just lonely? Um, and it kind of was like mirroring the whole situation, and that's why Jane's staring at it. And they they don't discuss that what's happened to either of them, which is absolutely nope, wild nope. to me. Nope, she doesn't talk about her cat. <laughs> Nobody flat out accuses the other or, you know, talks about how their mornings went. Yeah. And honestly, like if this is the I was, I was like, so this episode was so weird because I was like, if that would have been the first thing I brought up. And if I wasn't bringing it up, it would have been on site. Like, if somebody tries to, like, blow up my family, it's on site. There's nothing to yep. talk about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, especially if I'm, like, an assassin spy, like, it, yeah, it's a wrap. So, anyway, they have this parlay. And um, <laughs> I, I can't remember exactly how the conversation goes. But um, essentially, they are uh, kind of at odds and they don't seem to find common ground and Jane's like why don't we take this outside and so they start heading outside <laughs> and John makes a rookie mistake and goes into the like uh, uh, rotating door, door revolving mm -hmm. door and Jane traps him in there with a knife and a bomb <laughs> and he's stuck <laughs> and he's want to get out oh gosh so yeah that's yeah. the <sighs> That's the instigating moment for them, I think, in particular, because at that point, it's like, yep, she just, like, he just saw that. <laughs> the other stuff he was assuming, like, they both were assuming about each other, and from here on out, it's like, game on. You literally, I just saw you try to kill me. <laughs> I also want to just take a like, second oh, and talk God. about the world. Like, if, like, <laughs> I, I am a person who, like, I, you know, I'm not, like, I don't, like, go out to people watch, but if I'm, like, around, I'm, like, people watching... If I saw a guy stuck in a revolving door, I would probably be like, hey, man, you all right? You need some help? Or like, but nobody, there are people who go in and out of the building and see this man like try to bust his way out of this revolving door. They're just like, not my problem. And just keep going about their day. <laughs> They're probably like, oh, gee, that's embarrassing. That'll that be fun. sucks, bro. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> if it was me, I wouldn't want them to notice. I don't know. And I, to me, that just felt like so unrealistic. I was like, okay, so we're in a cartoon now. And so I looked at it as like, it's a cartoon. Uh, so, okay. Um, but, but also at that moment, too, it's like, yeah, like you're saying, there's also a lot of witnesses around, and it doesn't seem to matter to them as we begin this sort of <laughs> kill or be killed chase. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. After the bomb John barely goes gets off. away after the bomb yeah. goes off. After the bomb goes off, he, like, stumbles out, sees her, and it's on. The chase is on. That was another moment. But I was like, okay. Like I said before, it would have been on site. But first of all, like, I assume that they live in America. And uh, all, like, the, a bomb just exploded. And people are aware and freaking out. And, like, people are kind of, the tensions are high, right? Bomb exploded. There's a threat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you, you know. Anyway, and so and then John starts like full on sprinting after Jane and she starts running away. And I was like, the, my suspension of disbelief in that moment was fully out the window. I was like, there ain't no way. Ain't no way. I've lived in this country for 32 freaking years. Ain't no way a black man is chasing a woman down the street and the cops or anybody else doesn't get involved. There's no way. There's no way. A hundred percent don't believe that. <laughs> like, they're running down the street, full sprint, and you can tell he's chasing her, and everybody's just like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Until they get to the park. Yeah. There is that moment where they get into the park, but again, it's like, 
they're not even concerned about anybody watching them. It doesn't seem like that's a fear for him at all in, the, <laughs> in that moment. Um, yeah. I was, and I don't know where she's he's like, <laughs> I mean, she's full on like punching him. He grabs a bottle and like hits it over her head. And then there's other people jump in. Oh, yeah, those the frappers are like, hey, that, she's choking that guy out. Let's get in. <laughs> these, these guys come up. It's like, it's like full, full on a cartoon. These guys come up, and they're like pulling Jane <laughs> off of John because she's choking him out. And he's like, hey, that's my wife. You know, it's like pop by the sailor, and he punches the guy. And then the guy punches him because he's like, oh, you punched me. And everybody in the park is fighting. And I'm like, what is happening? Why are they fighting yeah. everybody? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, what what is going on right now? And then... Part of me was also wondering, like, where are these other agents that were trying to attack them in the beginning? Are they there somewhere, too, in case they fail? Um, at some point when John and Jane are wrestling, I thought I heard somebody say, Jane? And I went mm. back to rewatch and look at the subtitles, but it didn't say it in the subtitles. Ooh. But we see, never I... really, like, get that. I don't know if I went back and, like, looked for faces, if we would see, you know. That's I don't want to really jump too clever. far ahead, but, like, yeah. I fully missed that. And at that moment, I like, in my head, I was just like, oh, yeah, no, they were, it was them trying to kill each other. And I was just, I was, honestly, I was kind of checked out because I was like, this is, this is silly. This is a cartoon. Fully, like, like, forget the shark. We jumped over the moon at this point. And like, I, I'm just like, all right. And sometimes, I, so like, my, uh, a lot of my friends rag on me about this, but like, I like to finish stuff when I start it, even if I don't necessarily like it. And my friends were like, dude, you have a limited amount of time in life. Don't waste it on stuff you don't like. So I've tried to like get better about that. If there's something I'm watching I don't really like, I'll fast forward it. And so I was like, I was, I was like, should I fast forward it? And I was like, no, I need to know what happens for the show for Take This TV. So I watched it. But if I was watching it on my own, I probably would have fast forwarded. Like, all right, let's let's get to the point. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> So anyway, they're having this fight in the park, and then the cops and start the, coming yeah, over. Yeah, the cops finally come over. <laughs> freaking, these freaking Barty Fife ass cops come over, and they're like, "Hey, you cut that out!" <laughs> so John and Jane start running like Tom and Jerry, trying to get away from what's happening. And, and John says, "There's a bomb," you know. Yeah, he's like, the "There's a bomb." <sighs> Not to, so. The, the, uh, by the way, the, the cops are just like strolling in the park. A whole door just blew up in a museum, like a block away, and these cops are just like going for a leisurely stroll in the park. <laughs> <laughs> the job is like there's a bomb. And everyone's like, oh my god! And so <laughs> they, in the chaos, they start to get away, and John's still chasing <laughs> Jane, and um, he's like <laughs> closing in on her, and he stops on the stairs, and he's like, Jane. <laughs> It's like I, I busted out laughing because he. I was just like he's Skeletor in this moment. He's like, I will get you, he man. Yeah, yeah. He's trying it's to like, do the catchphrase thing. Yeah. I'm like, what is happening, dude? Um, oh my gosh, I can't remember at yeah. which point because there's a hilarious point where they both they're they're like texting each other, trying to like maybe give each other one last chance, and neither one of them is like taking it or opening up. And then they like see each other across the street and yeah. start running again. So Jane kind of slips before away. Or after the taxi hits John. <laughs> right before the taxi. So yeah. John texts Jane and he's like, um, you know, I need to talk to you or something or other like that. Or and just trying to like see if they can reconcile. And uh, Jane is being really cold as usual. Um, and then they, they spot each other across the street and start the chase again. And then John get hit, gets hit by a car. <laughs> And Jane stops to see if he's dead. Yeah, yeah. But then she, she keeps up. running. Oh, yeah. um, they get back to their house um, where we find John's mother, which I thought was an interesting scene, uh, who Jane has never met. Mm -hmm. uh, we learn that she has been living around there for about two months, um, which Jane was unaware of. Um, she also had an emergency key to their place, which Jane was unaware of. Um, but she has this heart to heart with Jane about how John needs to feel safe. And, uh, and also we find out that John's actual name is Michael, that Aww. Michael needs to be safe um, in order to feel loved 
and he needs he needs you to he needs to feel that you love him he needs to know that you love him that he's always been kind of needy in that way with his own mom i i definitely think that like just like as i was see i was like wait okay he moved his mom down and like he didn't tell jane about it and then like he gave his mom the emergency key and i i was expecting her to be mad about that because she, like we heard her say before um is like who's your emergency contact he said his mom and she's like you're mine and mm-hmm. so i was expecting her to be mad about that but she doesn't necessarily react in an angry way uh, maybe she's just trying i think she's taken aback that john's actually spoken to his mom about her mm. and also actually said good things about her because up until this point like from bev and from the therapist like john's been saying horrible things about her and that's what she's been hearing as feedback sometimes but like to his yeah. mom who he loves so much he actually confided about jane like his feelings so i think maybe that's what i don't know makes her not as angry because she's like oh my god he really he might actually care yeah (laughs) it is sweet to kind of see her soften up a little bit um and we do kind of get some jane kind of confides in in uh john's mom also that like she has you know had some troubles in the relationship but still you know had thinks that they might be a good fit together in some regards um but I also think that it was like just a sidebar. It was really cool to learn that that um, that's actually Donald's real mom who was playing his mom in the show. Aww, and I thought that was so really sweet. sweet. Yeah, that's super sweet. I love that. Um, um, meanwhile, while this is happening, our John <laughs> goes next door to Hot Neighbor's house he um, does. <laughs> to try to sneak through and get to the balcony, but. Um, while he's in the house, he keeps asking for various things, you know, like, can I have a towel to clean up? Can I have some water? And he's, like, snooping around the house. Um, yes, because he gets, <laughs> Jane locks him out of their house, and he doesn't have a key. So he runs in the hot neighbor, and, and, like, it's like, oh, can I go through your house? I fell, I fell off the stairs. And that's why <laughs> I look like this. Oops. <laughs> yeah. um, I was asking myself, though, I was like, why is John snooping through hot neighbor's house? Like, what is he expecting to find? That felt like really random. And I, I was like, did I miss yeah. something? I was expecting him to just like hurry through there and get around to get back to, you know, mm-hmm. get back to Jane. Like I thought he was going to walk in on that conversation with his mom and, and Jane. But it did. I think it was from a sense of jealousy. Like, I don't know if he was hoping to find something of Jane's that would prove like, oh, she's been actually having an affair with this guy. Like a love letter? Or something. Yeah, I don't know what he was expecting. <laughs> a pair of underwear she's left behind. Like, <laughs> <laughs> These are Jane. Jane! <laughs> she, he goes downstairs um, where he sees all these schematics of different buildings, including in particular John and Jane's home and pictures of them walking down the street. Creepy. Um, very creepy. Uh, and the neighbor comes back down and finds him there. And he's like, you're not supposed to see this. <laughs> very kind of ominous. <laughs> you're not, yeah. You weren't supposed to see this. <laughs> um, and he admits like, we all talk about you, the neighborhood. Mm. <laughs> Um, but he says that he's, uh, his name is Harris. He's an agent for Sotheby's. And John is like, what? Like, what agency is that? <laughs> <laughs> what spy agency is that? Yeah. Being a, being a poor millennial, <laughs> I also was like, what is that? <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> I feel like having lived in L.A. now, like if I didn't live in L.A., I probably wouldn't know either, but I see so many houses here that have Sotheby's. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, John, how can you not know what Sotheby's is? <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> I will say, like, finding out Hot Neighbor is actually a realtor who's been trying to, like, snatch their house up. It feels like a Ralph Boner moment to me. <laughs> And if you don't know what that is, there's a <laughs> show called WandaVision. It was an MCU show, and uh, the actor who played Quicksilver in the X-Men movies was in it, and everybody thought he'd be Quicksilver, and he's just a random guy named Ralph Boner. It felt like that, um, yeah. where the, the show's just kind of, you know, kind of fucking with you a yeah. little bit, like, oh, you know, red herring or whatever. Yeah, because um, I remember when we first met him, I definitely thought, like, oh, he's maybe a spy for High High. 
Yeah, like he's a spy to, or he's yeah. some some kind of assassin or something. Yeah. No, nope, he's just a realtor. <laughs> no, nope. but he's, 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 and he's super obsessed with her home. Uh, one of my favorite lines in this episode was, your home is my Moby Dick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, he's chasing that white whale of their own. Yeah. Because he, yeah. he, he does call out how weird it is that they would be able to, like, have all these renovations done to this place um, and how valuable that would be. Because um, we do learn earlier that he has been in their home and John's like, you've been in my house? What? Um, a couple of times. A couple of times. He does mention that, like, <laughs> uh, how could you afford that on a software engineer's uh, salary? Mm-hmm. And I was like, the yeah. people who wrote this don't know how much money a software engineer makes because they very much could afford that. <laughs> so <laughs> It's a lot. It's a lot. So um, anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he, like, thinks they need to be some sort of, like, Russian oligarchs or, like, you know, royalty or, yeah. Yeah. I did think that, like, I feel like the conversation between Mom and Jane – and John confronting Hot Neighbor and the Red Herring, it all feels really weird to happen in the season finale. Like, it mm. kind of feels like the season finale is a bunch of episodes mashed together. Because, um, like, we we did kind of have the plant of the Hot Neighbor early on, and then he doesn't really show up for a while. And now he's kind of back for this, this final bit here. Um, and it just feels yeah. really out of place. Yeah, we only get, like, glimpses of him. I think he was, like, at the farmer's market for a second chatting with her, but that's about it, really. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, after that beat, <laughs> he finally leaves his house after they share a drink of whiskey <laughs> together. Because <laughs> John, John has, like, pulled out his gun on him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on Hot Neighbor, but then, you know, it de-escalates and they share a drink together and then John moves on, but by the time he gets back to Jane, you know, mom's gone, he enters through the basement, he decides to turn on some music. Like, you know, <laughs> Which I was like, like, you, I guess. I was you, like, you what snuck in the house and then you, you use your phone to turn on the music? Like, she's gonna know you're there. <laughs> like, what? But does he care? Like, this is the thing, like, of this whole sequence. Like, this is where we really get the Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Brangelina version, where they're, like, shooting at, at each other in the house. But, like, the fact that he turns on music, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, so you just, you want her to know you're coming. Like, do you really, you might not really want to kill her. It's been a while since I've seen the Brangelina <laughs> version of the the movie of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. But this feels almost beat for beat. Even some of the dialogue. It's like, hey, babe, you still alive, honey? You okay? <laughs> I was just, I was, I was dying. I was in physical pain, uh, not figuratively, um, watching this. And I, I honestly, like, I, my patience ran out on this, and I fast forwarded a bit because I was like, let's, let's wrap it up. You did. Let's wrap it up, baby boy. I don't care. They're, they're definitely tearing this place up. You know, the neighbors, Moby Dick. They're tearing it up um, with all their gunshots, but none of them are hitting. You know. Yes. And I mean, I think that like. <clears throat> I think that like okay, I I'm trying not to go in too hard because I'm like, I, there are things I like and I I mm-hmm. want to keep it light, but at the same time it's like <laughs> I really hated this episode, <laughs> but like really? just like I like the show set up the tone of like oh you know things are the stakes are real like things are dangerous this is a dangerous job they're in Il- Italy like being chased by people like shooting folks in the streets popping off their gun at a wedding to get people to move out of the way and like John discovers the hot neighbor has like pictures of them and knows all this information I'm like dude blow this guy away what's <laughs> this guy would have been dead three or four different times over like what so I, I don't know maybe, maybe I'm a different kind of spy than John there's a lot there's boundaries Carmen <laughs> it's okay when it's for work but, but outside I mean, of that it's like your cover's blown you're like you're there's bombs at your mom's house it's like we got to start, people got to start getting folded. We got to drop some bodies. <laughs> like, so anyway, I, that was weird. And then like, um, I think that, uh, um, well, I think the point I was trying to make is just the tone yeah. shift between the, the, re- the first half of the show and the second half of the show makes it feel like this moment, this like Mr. and Mrs. Classic Mr. and Mrs. Smith mm-hmm. moment um, from the like Bra- Brangelina one. It feels like they did a lot of work to try to get to this moment. And mm-hmm. to me, it just feels like it was in disservice of the rest of the show 
which feels mm-hmm. like it had new creative ideas that were a little more modern. I agree. I feel like in the beginning they did a great job of setting it apart from the original and, and telling us like this is going to be a different a twist on what you think it is. And I love that. I love the awkwardness of it. I love that they're like not the typical agents. Um, but yeah, bringing us back here to it, it felt a little unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because like, they had something special. Um, I did still like it though. I mean, I like where they get which so before we get there i'm just gonna say one of the lines that i liked was when he was throwing the the flower pot when he's like don't do it which is you know and then he throws the flower pot and ties (laughs) her up and then we get to the scene with the truth serum yes so um (laughs) after they lay the smack down on each other john knocks jane out with the flower pot and then ties her up and um gets out the remaining truth serum that they have and he gives her a shot and he gives himself a shot and we see them sort of be really vulnerable and honest with each other, maybe for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that moment. I feel like Donald and Maya really shown in their parts, like the physical comedy <laughs> of being drugged up and being honest with each other. And they're like, you know, writhing along on the floor and feeling on the little wooden legs and I don't know <laughs> the dialogue in that sequence was especially funny like he's like I feel like I have sex on my hands like, <laughs> 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 so funny that's true like, that's the comedy that I love and kind of wanted to see more of as opposed to like the traditional Mr. and Mrs. Smith sort of yeah but yeah I, I love this scene I'm a little sad that they did have to like inject themselves in order to be this honest but (laughs) i like that we finally finally get that and we finally finally have you know her ask about the cat (laughs) we do they find after all this stuff happening she's like why did you kill max and he's like i didn't kill max why did you put a bomb in my mom's house and she's like i didn't do that Uh uh-oh must have been high high (laughs) Duh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like what an Come hour on, and a guys. half later, they're like, it wasn't you. <laughs> but there was um, a great and- moment though, like where John and Jane are bonding and um she asks him, Would you still love me? Um what did she say? Would you still love me? She they start talking about because right before that they we finally get information that we've been craving since the first episode about like why was he released from the military or the Marines? And why was she, why didn't she make the CIA? Mm -hmm. And so he says that he got kicked out for asthma and she says she didn't make it because of her sociopathic tendencies. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, And we do learn that the marbles uh, that she was keeping in episode one is like every time that she does something sociopathic, she puts a little marble in there to keep track. And we learned that she has like 30 or 79? 20? No, 79, 79, she said. I wrote down. 79. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, 78. 78 marbles now, she said. 78 so, sociopathic things that she's done. <laughs> and we saw two of them. Well, we saw her put the second one in in that one episode. But like in between now and then... Yeah. All all of this stuff has happened. (laughs) So Jane is definitely more murderous and sociopathic than we suspected. (laughs) Um I like when she says if she if he will still like her, like knowing that. Mm -hmm. Then he says, Are you exactly the same as you are now, but just a sociopath? (laughs) And he says, Yeah, and she's like, Oh, you're making my heart jump. I was dying. That <laughs> line delivery was so good. It yeah. was. That was a really sweet moment. And then they start to kiss and and connect again. Um, and they kind of admit that they had clear shots that they didn't take. Yes, which I thought was nice because <laughs> there are some moments where I was like, why are you missing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. <laughs> we also learn... Um, they ask each other, like, what makes you the most sad? Mm. And we get a moment where I think Jane talks about her mom's body. Yeah. And remembering her mom's body when she died because her mom was in this horrible car crash. Um, 
And then for John, it's like not being able to pay his dad back and his grandma by giving them kids. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. It, it is. And it's really <laughs> sweet. Yeah. Um, and then after we kind of have their moment of reconnecting and they put together that it was potentially Hi Hi who was behind all of this, um, they hear someone in the house. And they go to investigate. And guess who it is? Somebody we've seen before. Oh. Super John and Super Jane. <laughs> Super John and Super Jane. <laughs> yes. And at first, they were like, oh, hey, guys, it's good to see you. And then John's like, wait, how did you get in? And then Jane, too, pulls out the gun. And it's like, you know, this, you know, put your hands and up. Also, that. It's so funny because, like, when we saw Super Jane and Super John earlier in that initial episode, Super John had mentioned he had been married before, but, like, lost his partner. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, so did they, like, did he kill her and rejoin? Did he kill his own Jane? <laughs> and was it, actually successful and got to continue? It seems like it. Yep. And so um, John, too, suggests that they do the sit down. And so uh, they get John and Jane to sit down, our John and Jane. Um, and they're, since they're on the truth serum, they're like, you know, are there weapons in the house? And they tell them where all the weapons are. Um, and Super John's like, we finalized a lot of Smiths, but never on truth serum. Yes, and we learned that finalizing <laughs> is what they call it when you kill other Smiths. And we also learn that extremely high risk, all it is, is killing other Smiths. So that's like so what that episode, they special then. Yeah, yeah, and that episode where they drop them in the jungle... Mm -hmm. That was that was a smith. That they apparently, killed. with a mm -hmm. machete. <laughs> so we kind of get some more insight into like what is Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the company, how does it work? Um and then Jane too mentions that like Hi Hi knows what you're gonna do before you do it. Which when I had a theory, when I was like, okay. I also I also just saw what was it, uh Mission Impossible um uh, Dead Reckoning Part 1. <laughs> I saw that not too long ago. And I was like, oh, hi, hi, it's an AI. It's an AI. Um, it's not a real person. It's an AI, and it's using a predictive algorithm yeah. based on the psych profiles that you create when you do the interview at the start. I don't know if that's true or not, because we never really Which is out. something we were suspecting initially, too, because we were saying it might be like a Black Mirror thing, mm -hmm. or it could be an AI, because they never, in the interview process, you know, it's just the machine. Which would make it even more creepy when Hi Hi was like, "Are you happy, Jane? We feel like you're valued and all this kind of." And it's like, so it's like this this calculating machine that's like using uh, manipulating your emotions. So I don't know. We mm -hmm. don't know if that's true or not. Hi, I could just be a person. So uh, we never really find out. But um, we get some more insight into. Oh, and also, John Two and Jane Two are, are super about it. They're company people. They've like. They, they live in the Kool Aid. They hi, worship hi. Hi, hi. They're yeah. like, Hi Hi knows what we do before we do it. He knew all of us before we were Smiths. <laughs> <laughs> um, By gathering data on the internet about all of us now. <laughs> so John makes a run for it, gets away from the table, and then in the confusion. Oh, because of the sneeze, they take advantage of Super John's <laughs> three sneeze problem. That's right. <laughs> That's right. He can't. Sne he sneezes in threes. So he starts sneezing, and John gets away from the table. Our John, and then Jane, our Jane, shoots <laughs> John too in the face. Which somehow he is Super John because he's still alive after getting shot in the face. Yeah. <laughs> somehow, and he's blinded in one eye. Um, and then Jane too is like hunkering down in the kitchen and. Every, there's a lot of chaos and things are happening. Um, <laughs> and it's really funny because we hear uh, Super John being like, I can't see. <laughs> We're kind of whining to, you know. She's like, it's okay, honey. <laughs> yeah, she's like sucking up. <laughs> yeah. Come on, honey. Oh, That's so pretty funny. <laughs> our Jane uh, is able to escape from the kitchen and make her way upstairs with our John to hide in the safe house, which mm -hmm. I, again... I don't know. Maybe I just play a lot of video games <laughs> being really murderous. And I'm like, yo, okay, John 2 is blinded. Just two of y'all is one of her. Merc her right now. <laughs> like, both of y'all together can take her. <laughs> Wait till she's out of bullets and then just do her in and then get John 2. But they run upstairs to the safe house um, and they lock themselves in. And that's when we and realize. And then we find out. What do we find out? Yeah. 
We find out that our John's been shot in the gut. Mm. And it doesn't look good. He's bleeding a lot. He's bleeding a lot. And uh, it's not looking good. <laughs> it's not looking good. He tries to ask Jane how it looks, and she can't lie, so she doesn't say anything. But, she, <laughs> I mean, she, like, you know, she does her head, and he's like, you're, you're a bad liar. Yeah. <laughs> Just when they he's started like, Is to it okay? She's like, yeah. So it's not looking good. Um, in this moment, too, she's finally like, okay, stay with me, John. Like, what is your plan? Because, you know, in the previous episodes, we've been having this problem where it's like he thinks she's controlling and she takes the lead. And here she's like, OK, John, you take the lead on this, which I think is kind of a sweet moment. Um, so she's like, what would you do? And he was like, I w would wait until it gets dark because she's going to have to, like, you know, turn on the lights. We're going to have a moment. But we find out that they only have one bullet left. Yes. So John doesn't have any bullets and Jane only has one. Um, and then uh, Super Jane is outside the door. She's trying to figure out the pin code and can't yeah. get it. Um, but as we, oh, uh, something we learned also earlier is that Hi Hi was giving Super John and Super Jane information about our John and our Jane. So there's a very high possibility that she could just get the code to the safe room from Hi Hi. She ha hasn't done that yet, so she's trying to figure it out. <laughs> um, and our John and our Jane are trying to figure out what to do. And our John tells our Jane that like they it doesn't make sense for both of them to die, and she's like, "No, we're not mm -hmm. doing that." Mm -hmm. Um, but we uh, when we also get some really sweet moments in this conversation that we're having when you know they're talking to each other, and she tells John like, "Okay, you know we can have one kid," <laughs> and he says five, and he's he says five, she's like two. <laughs> 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 I'm not compromising anymore. <laughs> they're negotiating how many kids, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, we learn her real name, which is Alana. And he says, I prefer Jane. <laughs> or I like Jane. Yeah. And he says, I like, and she says, I like John. And he says, I like Jane, which is really sweet. But they like who they are with each other. And so John's bleeding out <laughs> and he's having a hard time staying awake. And his wound is getting worse and worse. And so Jane's like, I'm going to open the door and I'm going to shoot her. And then we're both going to get out of here. And John's yeah, like, on the count don't of three. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so she says on the count of three, John's like, don't do it, but he's having a hard time staying awake. And they count down, and then we cut to the outside of the house, and we see some gun flashes, and then the credits roll. Three. Three gun flashes. Three gun flashes. Three. Jane has one bullet. Yep. That's it. That's what we're left with. So do... <laughs> We don't want to, it's kind of an ambiguous ending of like, you know, she had one bullet, maybe, you know, Super Jane got her and maybe now our, our John and Jane are both dead or maybe we can live in a fantasy world where somehow, you know, she was able to fire <laughs> off that shot. <laughs> I don't Can know. We, Why do we, <laughs> we can keep hanging on to hope that, you know. <laughs> I I didn't think about it until you just mentioned the three shots and I was like, oh, so our Jane shoots, either misses or doesn't kill Super Jane. Super Jane kills our Jane. Super Jane kills John. Three shots. Yeah. Uh, that's I didn't pick up on that, but I was like, oh damn, yeah, that's probably what happened. But <laughs> we don't see it, so we don't, I don't know. We don't see it. It's still possible. She could have like maybe she grabbed the other lady's gun and was able to, you know. Maybe she missed, grabbed the gun, was able to shoot her with maybe. her own gun. We do. Or maybe she was able to shoot her and Super John. Maybe. Maybe those are the two shots. She grabbed her gun, boom, boom. And our, and our heroes will live to fight another day. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, you know, we could, we could, we could hold out hope. And we do get a scene. So, like, the credits start rolling and we get, like, a little mid credit scene where um, the nosy neighbor, hot neighbor, comes by and he's like poking his head in to, because John asked to borrow the book uh, so he could actually read it. Because uh, the hot neighbor was essentially telling him, like, yo, get over it and read the book. And so he was bringing the book by for John to borrow it and he sees the place the is all shot up. The prophet. Which I don't know anything about that book, but maybe it has something to do with the themes of the episode. <laughs> themes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be really important. <laughs> yeah, like John, I, I did not read that book. <laughs> so, Me neither. 
Anyway, he drops it off, and then he's like, ooh, I'm leaving, because he sees the place is all shot up. And then he, and then we, we go back to the cartoon world, because he, he sees the place is all shot up, and he leaves, and he's like, hey, guys, real estate friends, the house is going to be ours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Warm up the pot, guys, because we're about to celebrate. Yeah, so instead of calling the police or anything, he's, he calls his real estate friends, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm yeah, closing this like, deal. <laughs> it's time. I see an opening now. Yeah, uh, it's pretty yeah. silly. Um, but that's that's what we're left with. That's the end. But I want to know what happened to John and Jane. I do too. There was some some. Uh, <laughs> I, I did some stuff. Every time I watch something, I'm always online. I'm like looking up YouTubers and stuff on, on the internet. Um, so I think is uh, is it Francesca, who's one of the co-creators, mm-hmm. uh, mentioned that like um, season two they're gonna you know with TV shows and stuff you know a lot of the times. Um, when renewals happen, they're either not allowed to talk about it or they don't really know for a while. So, you yeah, know, she was answering the question as best as she could. And like, you know, it depends on the reception and how well the show does and all that kind of stuff. But um, they they are thinking about what they would do if they were greenlit for a season. Okay. two. Um, well, they left the door open. They could bring back our our John and our Jane or they could start up with a new John and Jane. Um, but, yeah, they definitely. They definitely left the door open for that, so. They did. We'll see. Since this is like the season finality, finale, what did you think <laughs> about the whole show? What did you think about the finale? Oh, gosh. Um, like I said, I, I loved, loved, loved when they were open and, and honest with each other and the comedy in that scene. Um, I love Maya, Maya Erskine and Donald Glover. I thought their chemistry together was great. Um, their comedic bits and moments were were wonderful um so overall i and i and i enjoyed it especially when they were working together on the same side heck yeah i didn't like when they're arguing so much i want i would like to see them like team up again and and go against the world heck yeah john and jane versus the world (laughs) what about you carvin um you know i think that um the first half of the season i enjoyed better than the second half uh personally i really hated the finale uh, a lot, <laughs> but you know, I think the thing is like, I'm not the kind of person to yuck somebody else's yum. I think that there are, and, and also like I, I remember being, uh, in, in school and, and watching the original, uh, Bragelina one. And so mm-hmm. like some of this, for somebody, this is the first time they've ever seen that. And I think that like, I think that if there, if you like the show, heck yeah, dude, I'm happy for you, but I just don't think it was for me. Um, and I think they kind of lost me halfway through. Um, I think there are a lot of talented people who worked on the show. I think the performances were really great. I just don't think it was necessarily for me, but I do think that like, and I also, I think there's some, some like storytelling things that I just don't like in, in stories in general. And cliffhangers is one of those things. I hate it when something is on a cliffhanger and I'm like, uh, so I was really bummed about that, especially after investing so much time. But um, I, I think that if they do a second season, you know, I'd probably give the first episode a watch. If they do the thing where it's mm-hmm. like, oh, there's new characters and you have to watch the whole season to see if John and Jane are alive, I would be super not into that. So <laughs> I think I would just like, I would probably just, I'm, more or less what I'm saying, I think I'm, I've kind of checked out at this point. It wasn't mm-hmm. for me, but I had a lot of fun watching it with you, though. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Well, we will see what happens and where it goes. We will. Oh my gosh. Uh, so that brings us to the end of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, thank you all so much for watching with us. Subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Tell us what you thought about the whole season, about this episode, about everything. Um, we're on social media at Take This TV on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks again for watching. Welcome to the club. And remember, it's dangerous to watch TV alone. <laughs>